the question remains, what do I do? Obviously, the heroes are coming, and at 21.30, there was a going. Since we are here, each one of us is experiencing life as it is differently. So, there is someone who wants to experience something, that's why he is here. Body, mind, whatever. And yet, there is no th much thought process going. Except this question, what do I do? So I would welcome you to simply pay attention to what is being said, nothing else, simply to pay attention. Primarily to that presupposition that the first step equals the last and why this understanding is important because it is this understanding what makes the world of difference why everything is energy absolutely everything everything one way or another is a form of energy how it displays itself, or at least how it temporarily appears, is what makes the difference. The great teacher used to simply say that in eyes, water is still water. In eyes, the composition of water is not changed. It remains to be a water. But it does not have the quality of flowing. It doesn't have the quality of fluidity. So in other words, water has lost its primal quality. It remains water, but it's not water that flows. So it's ice. So in the same way, as an analogy, we can say everything is awareness. Everything is consciousness. But is that consciousness which turn itself into an icicle, or it is something which is by very virtue of a potentiality that it's presented itself with, is in a state of great fluidity. So therefore, this, what you're asking, you see, in itself is inattentiveness, but a good inattentiveness in a way, because it at least accompanied by sincerity. So what do I do? You see? Back to the energy for a moment. Everything is energy. Every thought is energy. Everything we experience is one way or another is a form of energy. A different degree of frequency and it displays itself in that particular way, not in other. Degree of frequency, degree of vibration. Somewhere, somehow, it becomes subjected to that where it acutely presents itself as this experience. And with that experience, when it's accompanied by a sense of, well, that is what is being lived, it immediately forges itself into that what immediately has the potentiality there and then to impede that state of fluidity. So now back to what you're asking. What can be done? You see? Whereas if you were attentive, you would already somehow 
somewhere sensed that nothing can be done. Nothing can be done to it. But hang on a second. Stay with that inquiry. Nothing can be done with it. Before launching immediately on to the next conclusion. Because the mind wants to come up with a conclusion immediately that, wait a minute, if nothing can be done, then something here is being uh, insincere. Something is here. Someone is tricking someone. Because if nothing can be done, then why the ordeal? Why to gather? Right? If I'm saying that there's very, very ground-breaking understanding of what we spoke just now. That at the get-going, there is this where the whole ground beneath is taken. And it is not taken for no absolutely purpose. You see? This is where the paradox of all the paradoxes. In order to arrive at the place of greater and greater capacity to be fully present to whatever you do, to whatever you are, to whatever you experience, you have to be able to let go fully. If you cannot let go fully, then that what is in potentiality cannot present itself. Therefore, everything you do is already a bound activity. I'm taking another turn on the classical exposition of non-doership. It can be spoken, but you've heard it probably uh, quite a few times. You know, whenever there is this sense of doership, it immediately binds the doer when there is a sense of doership. But I'm not saying that, you see. We're taking another stab at it, another turn at it. So when you're asking me that, so what to do? My immediate response, you are not hearing me. And yet, to, let's say, offer that olive branch, so as not to come across as being completely in, let's say, state of uh, disagreement, I'm saying, but that's an honest at least, an honest response. So we try again, you see? We try again, so there's nothing to do, and there's no purpose. A similar discussion like this took place just now in Freiburg, when a, a young fellow, a uh, young man asked me, you know, like, what to do there? there? It's like, how to find purpose in life? So, hang on a second. So, what to do? First of all, first of all, there's nothing to do, you see? And there is nothing to do, nothing to hold on to, no purpose. If a complete novice hears this, this can be absorbed and most likely will be absorbed. And it is absorbed on, repeatedly because someone is not ready. But if someone ha has done some job some work understands this. This acts as a tremendous act of freeing that energy, which otherwise energy that belongs to that frozen condition. You hear me? So in other words, it's done for the purpose here. The proposition there is no purpose in itself carries the purpose. The only purpose here is to free energy. When energy is freed, it will move where it requires. Are you familiar with the principle of martial art? So even if in, like, you don't need to be familiar, like practicing it, or you maybe are. You know, I can see the hands like the you know, like good arm, forearms. Like, so there is, in martial arts, it's paramount to the very, very principle that at some point, there has to be a state of complete and utter flow. Because everything 
that is proceeding one way or another, mentation mental, follows the mental processes, slows the natural responses in the body. And martial arts is all about the body. In martial arts, one's body is an instrument. In some schools, the martial arts is to such degree that a bare hand becomes a sword. And it may be, of course, stuff of legends, and maybe it's, this is kind of like diverting our attention, but no. It's using the body here in such state of fluidity, but it cannot be done if it's preceding some kind of mentation. And entering that state of fluidity cannot be done by any trick or hook. You see? It comes on its own. Why and how? I just explained it. It comes on its own because energy is freed. When energy is freed, it goes there. And everyone in this room knows this experience if only you are honest with yourself that when there is something that is really let go, it immediately there and then translates as a greater state of fluidity. It's tantamount in, in the way we could say, the way we feel free is tantamount to the degree of the amount of letting go. The letting go here in itself is letting go of energy. The energy itself that acts prior to that as that constriction, contraction. So this is what Tantra at the get going does. You see, because Tantra, it's all about working with energy. It's somatopsychic and psychosomatic. And it works from the level where all the means, the, right? The means. Do you know that vocabulary? The word upayas, for example. Upayas, means. Means, how to. Highest, intermediate, lowest. The proper understanding in Tantra, there is no such thing as superiority of the higher in comparison to the low. This is a very, very big misunderstanding, particularly on the part of those who zealously study this or that text, and you know, they come up with this understanding. So this is why I say that, okay, let's give it another stab. Let's give it another go. It would be, of course, much easier on my part and in a way to say, well, yes, thank you very much for asking this question. What a useful question. Okay, let's roll our sleeves. Why? And, you know, we can come up with so many whys we, and how and what have you. No. First, first, this. Once this is already gave in, just gave in, you see? Like, there are different ways of how to open a bottle of wine. Hmm? Right? There are different ways. There is a one way you can manually do that screw cork opener. You rotate your wrist and everything, and then you have to hold the bottle between your knees, you know? And it's like if it's a real cork, and then you pull it out. And then you have those that are okay, you know, and there is a liver there. So you, it's much easier, and then you just pull it down. It removed much smoother. And then there is another one, which is simply pumping. You just pierce the cork. You know that one? And pump a few times, and that pressure that it creates, it forces the cork out. So that analogy is simply for you to understand that in this, what we speak right now, as soon as you want to hold on to something here, remember that that is precisely precisely what you are invited not to do. And it takes, paradoxically, some, some practice until this becomes the second nature. 
until that becomes a pure somatic experience. And this is what already now kind of giving a concession, what we often speak about. The difference between what is understood. In a given moment, understanding can be as a strike of lightning. And it should be as a strike of lightning. The, some of the greatest understanding has this quality of the thunderbolt. This is also the term Vajra, Vajrayana, Buddhism, is based on that. It's, it's like being striked by something. But you cannot remain in that, isn't it? The strike of lightning itself is a momentarily experience. It can illumine everything in the room, outside, night, dark. This lights on, and I experienced this many times in Central America. When lightning strikes, it leaves no corner in the room unlit. It's almost, not almost, it is a blinding experience. In that moment, everything is becoming as clear as the day. But you cannot hold on to that experience, even if it brings tremendous degree of clarity in a given moment in time. Therefore, that, what is required here, is the real deal, is when it becomes somatic. It is not based on memory, and it is not based on bringing a reminder forth. Because this is the real, real marvel of Tantra. When it is no longer requiring a reminder. Like, you are in a situation, oh, something burns you in life. Something is like, there's this jerk, you know, this mm, ah, mm, pressure, right? You absorb that shock and then you bring yourself a reminder. I'm okay, everything is good. See? Everything, like, breathe, whatever. Don't breathe, right? Hold on to breath, this, that. That's not what we're talking about. In every experience, that experience itself, at the somatic level, serves as a reminder. Do you see? So therefore, now speaking in terms of the, like, the importance, and again, you've, you've heard, you wouldn't be here, the importance of why, for instance, I realized that I cannot do anything other than that, because to me, I wasn't in my blooming teen, teens, like, you know, like, I wasn't even in my 20s. I was already in mid-30s. In mid-30s, fully living already life, I could have written biography by the age of 32. And yet, here we go. No, no. I want fully experience this world to what it actually presents and represents. And then, a refinement of that where every sense perception, every emotion, Nothing is left there that can be discarded, that can be considered as this or that. I prefer this because I don't like that. Every experience is there, serves as nothing other than that, what I have already, fullness of knowledge that that's who I am. So this is why when you ask just now, it's long response to you to remind that it's all about opening some valves of energy. Energy flows freely. Nothing needs to be done. Nothing needs to be said. Answers come on their own. And it only requires when, again, there is a possibility. It's almost like you sense, like you feel, like right, getting nippier and nippier and nippier. And you can see that like it's just that it's getting down to zero. And then at that moment, the water begins to calcify. That's when that coagulation of consciousness, suddenly everything becomes, forgive me, obnoxiously, obnoxiously, a real in the sense of how we infest that term. Something becomes mundane. 
something becomes deprived of that, you know, that, that something is there. You may want to say, oh, well, I'm sorry, you know what, like, I don't want that. I want a clear cut. Give me the clear cut. Give me the clarity. I don't have it. There's no such thing as giving clarity when it comes to this thing. But I do have something to share. Is that unless we leave this, where that sense of trepidation, that trembling something at the heart of every experience, that's when we know we are fully present to what is. So then, of course, all that, what was done before us, all the Eckhart Tolle's, the power of now becomes all too apparent. Because that power is what we are. So, give it another go. Try to ask me this question again. Yes, um, uh, I guess uh, personally I would say like uh, I just n at uh, this point where I just need assistance in letting uh, the energy flow that's that's all mm -hmm. I can't do it by myself anymore um, but I, I don't know why even if I feel like I can yeah, there is there is some some wall mm -hmm. in front of me. All these yoga hatha yoga practices don't make it. At some point, when knife becomes blunt, it doesn't cut it. That's why, in in English language. And I've lived in England like, like most of my adult life. Well, long enough, the longest I've lived anywhere in one place. Let's say, let's put it this way. I like all these English proverbs because English language is so otherwise um, it can be so I don't want to uh, end up with giving unfavorable epithet here, but you know it's it's like the language of the politicians, right, or diplomats, because you can say a lot of things without saying a thing, it, and English is good at that. It it has this, but there are these lovely proverbs, and of course they are in every single language. And, you know, it doesn't cut it. It, it, you know. Obviously, why doesn't it cut? It's a, it's a way of saying. It's a way of saying. So the analogy here is jumping on my tongue to link it with what we spoke earlier. So when the knife is blunt, it doesn't cut. So whatever we do or did, when it doesn't cut, needs to be replaced or sharpened, isn't it? So, again, I can go with this, and I can go at this concessional level, and it's like, yes, great, very good. Did you sign up for tomorrow? And Sunday? Okay, very good. Okay, see, very good. So I don't need to sweat to, con to convert you. Next question, please. Because, you know, he's already converted. Do you have something to add? So, no. Let's put you on a bit more. Let's see how much juice we can squeeze out of you now. So you're saying that you need help, right? You cannot do it, right? Now, I'm not putting your words, right? I mean, I'm not putting these words into your, into your mouth. You said it. It's too late. It's flow out. Okay? You can tell me later, that's not what I meant. Forget about it. That's what I mean. That's fine. 
So let's take this as an uh, already a very useful pointer even in advance of us getting together tomorrow. Okay? Because, I mean, like, on a camera or not, it's, don't worry, you'll get all this help. You, you, you will not be in the same consciousness by end of Sunday. That I guarantee you. You see? I'm a good salesman. You see? But I'm not, uh, what is it, snake oil? So, because if I was really that good, I would have been already really, really different lifestyle. But when I say something, I mean it. But I don't want us to wait for tomorrow because I would like to use this opportunity for this sincerity with which you come up. So you already come tomorrow morning where there is less job for us to do. You see? So I'm taking back what you just said. You said that you cannot do it. You need help, right? So I want to ask you before uh, coming up with any assumptions on my part. So who do you think will be able to do it for you? I can't find any. Well, I can't. When you talk to me, like you, you say you, I have to say that some, some sense of I wants to be here because there is no other way. Just because I. I Very good. I'm, I'm not picking on you. You just raised your hand, so, you know, like, and you asked. But I'm asking you. I'm asking you because, again, it's about freeing something here. We're trying to free something here. So what I want to bring to your attention here is that simply, simply to reflect on this, okay, like something to reflect on, at the end of the day. In this case, will be at the end of this evening. So my suggestion to you is at once may seem very, very disheartening. In fact, very discouraging. On the other hand, it's tremendously empowering. It depends what stand you take. And that's all there is. And so with that, I want to tell you that there's nothing that anyone can do for you. There's nobody in the entire universe. There's not a single being out there that has any capacity to do anything for you that you cannot do for yourself. And I'm not saying that in hypothetical, prospective, potentiality matter. I'm saying that as a reality of the situation. Because the way you and I experience reality is in purely subjective terms. In reality, this conversation takes place only in consciousness. In reality, this conversation may appear that you sitting there because you have some needs, you have some resonance, you showed up. I'm sitting here because of whatever, audacity, some maybe self-appointed purpose, and this situational setup and a conversation taking place. But in reality, all that what you experience, or all that I experience, that's all there is. You experience now this room, myself speaking, everyone around, everything, as your reality. And whatever change you may feel will come from somewhere. It is your own reality. It is not coming from somewhere. It only comes from the reality of your own consciousness. And it cannot come from anywhere else. You need to understand that because that's your primary condition. Everything else is secondary. 
This is your reality. This is your condition already. Everything else may seem as conditioning. So this is why I said, you see, it's a quicksilver situation. You can take this as utterly disheartening because you thought that there is a possibility that somewhere, somehow, you can be uplifted. Somewhere, somehow, by whatever means, someone, something, a planet, a guru, a master, a teacher, a gremlin, a tree, a, I don't know, a snake bite, a comet, a strike of lightning can bring and assist these changes. And I'm saying to you that there's no such thing. It's my job to say that, you understand? That all this is experienced on the account of pure, pure subjectivity of your own reality and that's all there is. So in a way, this already should free tremendous amount of energy. And you will, of course, have all the rights to protest and say, well, that's not how I experience it. This is why I said, this is where you can take it in any way. Because again, it's on the account of how you interpret it. You see? And it's just happened that somehow I feel that I can say these things to you because I sense something there, because there is this directness, honesty. I would even say humbleness. I'm not trying to read you. I'm just simply speaking what I experience. You see? Because whatever I say now, I wouldn't say, for example, to, I don't want to point out, like someone will I, where I will sense quite a bit of arrogance. Because anything like what is being said now will backfire. You see what I mean? It will completely backfire. So, this is like, since you signed up for the weekend, it's your kind of like uh, homework already. Okay? It's your homework to reflect on that. So that when you show up tomorrow, there is this fullness of understanding that everything is already within you. And yet we still together, sit down together and we do a bit of spinning. We do a little bit of something, something that that would begin to feel like stale, stagnant, can have the possibility to get more enlivened. How about that? But the importance here is that that sovereignty that sovereignty is what who is what you are that sovereignty cannot be taken away from you nor can it be given to you sit in that sovereignty savor that sovereignty and you want to eat Okay, I can see your night will sharpen the night. Do you like chopsticks? Do you eat with chopsticks? No. Forks. Hands. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, one can eat with, you know, like, yes, it's like art in itself to eat with the hands, you know. So it's like really, it's not just eating with the hands and it's all over the place, you know. It's like you take that rice and and put it here and you have the thumb, you know, and already the, the mouthful, the dollop of food there, and you shovel it in to the side. Not, not like that, you know, it has to be in to the side. See, it, it's very skill requiring. And somehow tastes better as well. I don't know what about it. It's like sideways you put into your mouth. You know, not just like, my two and a half daughter already doesn't eat like that. Not she's going to be three, but... So, this is where I feel we already begin. Okay? So, so thank you for showing up, for opening up the line of inquiry and for kind of rising 
and you know putting yourself on the spot i really appreciate that